guys. Welcome to another episode of the Blue Crew and New York Rangers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Johnny Lazarus, joined by my good friends, Cody Frankel and Avery Zaretsky. And we got a lot to get into, a lot of Rangers hockey this past weekend and a lot coming up. But uh, before we do that, I know it's a big week for our buddy Avery. Jake Paul's fighting Friday night in Orlando and Avery will be there. So do you want to talk about that, Avery? Like all your busy uh, work stuff going on? Yeah, I'm going to be really busy this week. I'm glad we were able to fit this in because I missed you guys and I wasn't able to stay on the whole time last week. Long story, basically got doxxed. It was crazy. I think I, Avery I said remember. one word on the pod with DZ. <laughs> I know. I was so upset. I was I was really looking forward to that Bro. episode. But yeah, it was crazy. My I think I got like 300 phone calls in the span of five minutes. So it was, it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah. Avery uh, is the sole purpose why Kodak Black. You got a link for, fry, for the fight? <laughs> The fight is free, so it's on DAZN.com, D-A-Z-N. Yep, Jake is not doing pay-per-view this time. It's it's for free, so you'll be able to watch 7.30. First time 730. ever? I think, yes, I think this is his first ever free fight. Uh, 7.30. So how does he make money off that? Bro's got, Bro's just got money, man. Dumb question. Forget that. He's got money. <laughs> it, it, this, is, this is all about experience for him. He, he wants to fight a real boxer. He, he's very serious about the professional boxing thing. It's not always about just the influencer fights. He, he's really excited for this one. So we all are. We're, we're, we're rooting for him big time, obviously. And, um, yeah, it's free on DAZN.com, the zone, 730 Eastern yeah, you time. Say it's going to be a big, it's a big week. No, nah, it's his own. But it's a big week for me. And we're really excited going up to Orlando on Wednesday morning, and I'll be there until Sunday. So I'm a huge boxing guy, always have been. Like some people like UFC, not for me. I've always been, you know, old school, love boxing. I meet my boys by pay per view all the time. Um, I saw Jake's last fight against Nate. Um, you know, I bought. I, I just saw the uh, the last fight I bought was the Garcia Gravanta fight, which was fucking sick. But the one thing I will say is, you know, there's a lot of these like influencers trying to fight now, like and whatever. Like, dude, Jake, Jake can throw hands. Like, Jake, like I, I wa- out of all the you know fights I watched, like, dude, he's got he can he can throw hands. Like, he'd fuck you up, Avery, with with one hand. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Who's the better fighter though, him or Logan? I don't, I don't follow. Them oh, dude, closely. Jake, it's not even close. It's Jake, not even, Jake. Well, Logan's, Logan's a re, Logan's an entertainer, dude. He's an entertainer. He, he. See, I thought you know, Jake. Well, I thought it was the opposite. No, 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 no. Jake can fight, dude. Jake can fight, and he would probably cream Logan. They're both very seriously skilled, but I think the Different difference ways. is Jake. Yeah. Jake takes the sport of boxing very serious. I mean, he. He moved to Puerto Rico specifically to clear everything out so he can he can train. He can focus his mind specifically on boxing. He's in the gym seven days a week. It's it's he a serious thing. Now. It's a serious thing now. It, it went from influencer boxing. I mean, him and Logan created the word influencer. There really wasn't any until they became a thing. So obviously when they got they, into boxing. They oh, yeah. That? Oh, yeah, dude. They really? were the biggest. They were they were the two biggest influencers in the world when when they were coming up the youtube the youtube shit and then well one of them which one was on disney channel wasn't it jake on jake disney was. channel yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but i remember they used to do those like youtube videos and stuff and every the crazy thing is i remember you two were probably both too young for this but like i never really watched like dude yeah. dude everybody would like make fun of them like like they were like like yeah they're they're getting their own but they were like oh whatever and now it's like they're laughing at literally everybody because I think they're they're running the game. And if you think about it, right, before YouTube, it was Vine, and Vine mm-hmm. is like what TikTok is now, and TikTok's the biggest app in the world. So it, they and they were the biggest guys on Vine. Yeah. So when they were coming up, they were the biggest guys. They're still some of the biggest, if not the the biggest YouTube creators right now. I mean, you look at guys like Mr. Beast, but other than that, it's really them too. And yeah. Jake just kind of realized that like everybody hated him on YouTube and the sport where you get paid the most to be the hated person is boxing. So he became, yeah. became a boxer and now Smart. he's really taking it seriously. And it's, it's amazing to see how far he's come and now he's fighting an actual boxer, something people have been asking for for a long time. And, you know, you'll get people say like, Oh, but you're not fighting a legit boxer. It's like, we also look at guys like Canelo, some of the greatest boxers ever, the guys who they fought in their ninth fight weren't that good either. So, 
you can't really micromanage this. This is a big fight for Jake, and and we're all really excited for him. And they have that. Uh, they partnered up with Austin Matthews, right? Their prime drink. That's that... Logan. Different. Oh, it's Logan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotta keep up with them. I gotta get more into it now that you're involved with them and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I haven't even like watched Jake Paul fight ever. So this Friday, I'll, I'll tune in after the Ranger. Tune game. in. Um, you guys want to talk a little Ranger hockey? I mean, I didn't get to watch Saturday night's game. I obviously was at the game last night. Uh, Avery, you again. I feel like it's like three weeks in a row right now where you're putting out these statements and these, uh, you know, what, what do they call it? Um, PSAs, I guess. Yeah. Public service announcement. I'll call it a Zaretsky State of the Union. Okay. Very yeah. original. <laughs> I was kidding. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, I, I'll get into it a little bit. I just yeah, think yeah. that I just think that you're a positive when, fan. I, yeah, and I and I don't understand why I get hate for being positive. I, I understand people. You can be mad all you want. I, you think that when the Rangers lose, I'm not mad. But at the same time, you can't look at these losses as the season's over. The Rangers two nights ago they lost their first back to back. Of the year, 25 games of the season. That's just a – that's an insane stat. For mm. the, for people to jump on the team, for people to jump on Igor after that, come on. It just it just I, doesn't make sense. I, I can ramble on all day about how, it, you know, you look at all these teams like the Boston Bruins. They, they had the best record in NHL history last year in, in terms of the regular season. They lose in the first round. We talk about it all the time. The regular season is just for seeding purposes and getting into the playoffs. Like everything changes when you get there. So all you got to do is just get there. And there's going to be adversity. Every single team in NHL history at some point in the regular regular season has faced adversity. And you'd rather mm -hmm. them do it now than later. And I don't really even think it was that much. Like they just they just can't be an amazing team every single night. It's just not going to happen. And if you expect it, you're being an unrealistic fan. Mm -hmm. Cody, you have any counter to that? No, I mean, I think, listen, it, it's, I've, I've never been a fan of just only being positive. I think you have yeah, to have. Yeah, I think some, Cody's like a fan's fan for sure. I, I, I think you have to have some negativity, right? Like you, you, you feel all the emotions with your team and also like Avery, I love you to death, but you're also a fraud because it, they'll, <laughs> they'll they'll lose a game and Avery will like text me and Johnny being like, I'm going to kill myself and, and throw myself off the bridge. So, you know, I, well, I think it's offense. He did say like, he does get pissed when they, lose. no, no fair. Totally. Yeah. Totally. But I think like riding the highs and lows of like a season, right. Obviously, you know, it's like, it, it brings out that, that type of fandom in you. And I mean, like, you know, I obviously commend Avery for being positive. It's not easy to be positive when you lose to the senator six to two. Okay. It's it's like not an easy thing to do. It's just not. Yeah. I mean, you lose to to the team at the bottom of the barrel in, in the division who's eleven and eleven. The whole conference. In, in the conference, I mean, yeah. not the division. Yeah. And you know, you you get steamrolled by them and it's like, all right, you know, now fans are freaking out, whatever. But like I, I think it's it's a lot easier to to shit on a team when they're losing games than it is to like find the positive so obviously i think it's you know guys like avery and you know not to toot his horn but i i think it, it's important to to find those positives um you know and, and find ways to build on that and like if fans want to get mad at that let them get me there's always going to be the the twitter trolls like i see this one guy trolling johnny on twitter all the time that he can't find love and like it is what it is <laughs> but um you know you? i i yeah it's good yeah. um <laughs> but i think uh you know i think just just keep doing your thing avery and and you know fuck those little haters it's just no it's just you, you can't just so look high. at a 60 you can't just look at <laughs> that a was so high dude oh so my god <laughs> <laughs> you can't just look at a 60 minute game and determine how you want to feel about the season. Like there's so many other factors that go into it. Not only with the Rangers, with the team that they're playing, the team that they're playing could have just come off of a disgusting loss and they have a lot of motivation to come out and they just catch the Rangers flat footed or the Rangers may be coming off a long travel day or something might've happened with their team bus. Like you just don't know everything. Yeah. There's a lot of factors that don't 
just include them going out on the ice. There's a lot of things that could be happening in the locker room. There's injuries. Like, you can't just look at 60 minutes and be like, they're done. That's the season. They have no effort. They showed nothing. It's like, yeah, they might have showed no no effort, but let's just see how they do the next game. Why? They're look decimated with injuries, too. I mean, yeah. like, well, what I will say, which is like kind of in the middle of the two of you, like to Avery's point, they're in first place. They're playing unbelievable. They're not going to win every game. It's a long 82 game season. And then to Cody's point, and we talked about it a little bit last week with Delzato, every game they've lost this year has been so fucking deflating. It's not like they're going out and playing a close, tight knit game yeah. and they just fall short at the end. The games they're losing, it's like one thing goes bad and then the whole game just spirals. And they're doing, yeah. they're doing something that I think we can all agree they should not be doing, which is losing to bad teams. And yeah. and before yeah. Johnny freaks out and says, "Well, Ottawa's not a bad team." Well, that's just because I bet my life they'll make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. So listen, I, I think obviously beating the very very good teams like the Bruins and the Kings, great, love it. Yeah. But you can't be losing to you know you can't be getting blown out by the Sabers and like even the Caps. I mean, they're as old as time. Like, yeah, sure, they're still fu- they're still okay. And they were yeah, playing they, pretty good before. They were playing they were pretty good, stretch. but yeah. I mean, letting. No offense to Ryan Linger and letting Charlie Linger get a win against us 4-0. Come on. I mean, I, I'd, know, rather I, beat the, I'd rather beat the good teams and lose to the bad teams. Agreed. I'm not, I'm agreed. Those are the teams. Those are the teams have you're gonna play. Those are the teams you're going to play in the playoffs. No doubt about it. But I think durability is like, to me, at least the most important thing during the season to yeah. figure out like who you are as a team. What is your identity? like how you how you play what's the chemistry and things like that and i think you know to to just crush the good teams get crushed by the bad teams i i think you have to find some balance again they're decimated by injuries i don't take any stock to it i want to see how this team looks with hito back um you know who knows if kaka will even have a spot the way johnny b's playing yeah. but um, you know, I, I, I think I want to see that first before I make any assumptions. And also, again, this team's in first place, like they're playing great. Okay. And, and if they're losing one, in, you know, one in every five games or at, how we just witnessed two in every five games, like who cares? Can I say yeah. one thing? No, yeah. really quick. Um, all right, no. Avery, up to you. No, no, this is, uh, just as we're recording right now, it's five twenty on Monday night. If the playoffs were to start right now. Do you guys know who the Rangers will be playing in the first round? Yeah. Devils. Devils. The New York Islanders. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Which, the Islanders are getting good now, huh? The Islanders right now are in the second wild card spot. They are playing tonight, though, against Toronto, so it could change, you know, as we're talking here. Um, but if the huh. Rangers get caught sleeping in a series against the Islanders, that's a team that can win and beat them. Well, I said that right. Let's, let's get serious. Let's sorry, Abe. Let's get serious here for a second, boys. We all know. Philly is not keeping this up for 82 games. Let's man. Let's, I don't know. I don't let's know. Stay level set. Let's stay level headed here. Okay. I will bet you any amount of money you'd like Johnny that Philly does not make the playoffs. You want to make a friendly wager right now. I will make a friendly wager with you. What do you want to bet on? Yes. What's your number? Wager. No, we don't have to dude. We can, be, I'll bet Just you a friendly bet. Let's do a dinner, a dinner. Okay. Done. Done. So you and, take me to dinner. If the flyers make the playoffs. If the Flyers make the playoffs, and if they don't, you take me to dinner. And if the Flyers do make the playoffs and then lose in the first round, Avery has to take both of us to dinner. So that's a win-win-win. Where do I cool. get it? Why did I get it on that's this? That's actually the best bet. <laughs> yeah, that's the best bet. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's locked. It's locked. Actually, no, but you guys disagree. I was going to make it more fun. Like I'll take you both to dinner, but then if, if it's the other way around, you both have to dye your hair. Oh, I, we're too old for that. <laughs> Come on. I mean, how about we jump in the Hudson? Something you can do. Yeah. Oh, stop it! <laughs> stop it! Um, just, okay. I just, I do want to say though, the Metro right now is is pretty tight. Like, aside from the Rangers who have separated themselves, they have thirty nine points. Mm-hmm. Like between the Flyers and the eighth place Blue Jackets, it's only nine points right now separating two to. Eight. It's all gonna get close. Like, even though the Rangers have such a big stride, it's gonna end up being a lot closer than it is right now. We we know that, and. And there's there's just no way the Devils and Canes don't like pick their stuff up. I mean, they're yeah. they're both playing mediocre. Uh, Dude, Pittsburgh, the too. Lost, 
Yeah, yeah, but but you're way higher. I mean, you you pick Pittsburgh to like win the Metro every single year. So, well, I can't believe their power play struggles, man. With that first yeah. unit, the fact that they can't figure out the power play is fucking mental. Yeah, maybe age finally caught up to them after 20 years together. Yeah. But they literally um, got the number one free agent defenseman to up their power play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. which is which is crazy. How's actually how's Carlson playing? I haven't. I haven't watched enough of their games. Um, I can check stats wise, just like to yeah. see where he's at. Yo, our jerseys wow. look sick, by the way. Dude, can we talk about that? Can we talk yeah. about that? So, listen, and John, I'll be the mediator for this one. Johnny doesn't like mm-hmm. the jerseys. Avery loves the jerseys. So I want to hear say both Carlson of your uh, points of view. Before? Yep. Before that, Eric Carlson, six goals, thirteen assists, nineteen points in twenty six games, plus twelve. So not bad. It's pretty no, it's bad, bad for uh, you know 100 points the year prior, but yeah, yeah. we'll take it. We'll take it. So, Jersey, okay. do you want to start, or do you want me to start, Avery? Uh, we'll go with the negative first, and I'll I'll rebuttal. I so okay. So in person, they definitely look cleaner, but I just don't think that they have like the Rangers are an original six franchise. Like if you're gonna make a third jersey, I don't like how it's this kind of modern look. Like you know what I mean? Like it's not a. I'm more of a classic guy. I think I've talked about this on the podcast enough. Like if you're going to do something with an alternate, like bring something back that people love, like don't overcomplicate it. Although like the one thing I will say is that they catered it to New York city, like the sleeves and the lights. That's like, it's what it represents is like the lights in the city. Um, so why I are you talking like, about it? Like it's dumb. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing that, but uh, <laughs> it's funny that you caught that. But you know what I mean? Like, I tweeted out those, uh, like, the Ferguson jerseys is what they're called, like the ones from the 70s. Mm-hmm. Like, I know people didn't love those. I, I personally, that's, like, my all-time, like, maybe aside from the White Liberty, like, favorite Ranger jersey. Um, and I'm just more of, like, a like a throwback. Like, Cody, you know I love, like, the vintage, like, starter jackets and stuff. Like, I like, oh, I you know. Know, making, I like making the old stuff pop again. So I wish if they were to do a third jersey, it would have been, you know, more of, like, a, a tribute to, like, the 80s and whatnot. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying the '80s specifically, but you know what I mean. I completely agree with you, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, if, if it if we both had it our way, we'd get the White Liberties back. Yeah, but, that'd be the sickest thing. <laughs> and I kind of talked, and I think I never had. Harped, I think I harped yeah. on a little bit when they first announced the release of the jerseys, and we talked about it. There has to be something with copyright because you see a lot of teams have great retro jerseys that they can't replicate either. I think the Canes are one of the only teams that have really gone back and like fully replicated their old yeah. whaler jersey but other than that i don't i could be wrong people could pull up receipts on this but i, I don't know for sure but I, the rangers might not be able to just use any of their old logos yeah. they might there might be restrictions to that but i love the crest Pete, we said pete blackburn or whatever said that the mm-hmm. crest doesn't belong on the jersey i disagree i think it looks great i also think um, maybe the sleeves are the one thing that I'm not a huge fan of that. Like, Oh, the, really? That's what I liked. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love, I love the white text. I love how much that yeah. pops. The back it of the really jersey looks pretty the pop. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the text on the, um, on the 2018 winter classic. I think the 2018 winter classic were, were the second best to the, the cream 20, uh, 2012, yeah. uh, because they're Adidas. The Adidas just the jerseys just look better with that with the white collar it had. I just like the white text, man. It just looks clean. I will add, okay. and I tweeted it last night. It's a shame that Igor didn't start in that game. Obviously not because Quick played his old team, but Igor's yeah. setup looked so fucking sick. His pads were sick. I can't wait so to see him wear them. He'll probably play against the Ducks, which is December fifteenth. Is the next time they wear those jerseys. So look out for oh, that. Friday, that's Friday night. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're them. That's the next time they wear them. And um, I would love for them to wear whites against Toronto. Well, no, well, no. What I was gonna say is, would it not be the sickest thing ever if the Rangers came out with white state white stadium jerseys, uh, and did something? They with probably the will. They're on the road, so yeah, probably will be. White. You think it'll be white? Probably. Yeah, if they're the road team, they're the road team. But weren't they the road team against Buffalo? Yeah, and yeah. they wore blue. Yeah, technically, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know but, how much uh, stock is taken into that, but but good for Quickie, man. He had an unbelievable game, and you saw in the locker room video. I, I don't know if you're listening to this now. If you saw it, 
they showed the locker room video where he got the Broadway hat and he said he had this circled on the calendar for a long time. Obviously, you know, the situation with mm-hmm. L.A., they they got rid of him and, and he's been moved around a lot. And now he's back home in New York. He's a Connecticut guy. He's he's happy to be in this metro area and he's 8 and one and playing phenomenal hockey and net. And we couldn't be more happy to have him. That was certainly the most emotional he's been like a post game scrum too. like, you know, his, yeah. his answers with the media are usually like pretty quick and just to the point, but you know, he was pretty honest and open about how much that game meant to him, like saying it was so hard to nap because all the memories are going through his head and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, Hell obviously yeah. All right. unbelievable. What? No, I was saying, I agree. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're just like, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, enough of that. Yeah. Should we go? Banquet. I mean, we, yeah, we have a lot of fan ones, so I feel like it's going to take up most of this episode. Yeah, let's we ride. First? All right, well, most this first this episode, one. We've been ripping it for 25 minutes. <laughs> no, I know, but we got a lot of fan questions. Good ones, too. All right, let's go. Uh, this first one's just from Charlie Krasinski. How does Sam Rosen have so much energy when the other team scores? I know you can't be biased as an announcer, but he has to be a Rangers fan. That's an interesting one. I never would he have is. thought of that. He, he, we know he's a Ranger fan. He, that's just his thing. He, he Yeah. From what I from what I know about Sam Rosen and the times I've talked to him and and you know we're, we're friends with his son as well Matt he's just a very passionate guy he's very passionate about his craft when he messes up he's very upset about it I know people play jokes on it and they like to you know say it's it's a funny thing about his thing but when he does that he's visibly upset about it like he doesn't like when he messes up and he he takes a lot of pride in it and that's why he's been doing it for so long and AJ Alex and we we talk about it all the time. I can't imagine a, a lifetime without Sam Rosen as the Rangers announcer. Like it's going to happen eventually, but right now you just can't take Sam Rosen for granted. His voice, everything, even when he calls the away goals, it sucks, but it's like his voice is just so iconic. You just, you just can't imagine a game without him. Yeah. It's honestly a good point. I was talking about it the other day with my friend Colby Cohen. Cause like, I think they've worked together in the past and whatnot. Yeah. And you know, that's the voice I've heard my whole life. Right. And you just said the same thing. And, um, I'm, I'm very fortunate in, in my seat for the hockey news. Like Sam is right directly above me. So I kind of hear it like in my ear live, which is like super cool. Cause that is cool. you know, you got, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's different. Like hearing him make these calls. Like I heard the Benino, Benino, Benino thing that he did like yeah. in my actual ear, like it was kind of cool. Yeah, um, cool. but yeah, I think it's good for an announcer to like get hyped for, for both teams. I mean, obviously you don't want to oversell it for the away team, but you know, you want to keep the listeners engaged, right? It'd be boring as hell if he's just like, oh, and the LA King score. You know, like, you want to have some yeah. emotion behind it. Um, all right, next one. This is from B Koch 32 and we're going to have a lot of these ones, I know for a fact. Do you think the Rangers play more structured and attention to detail when quick is in net? It's My initial different. thought is yes. Yeah, but, it's different. It's yeah. different. We talk. We talk about it. We've talked about it before. Igor's better with the puck. They play. They know that he can keep them. He can keep them in games. So they play a little bit more aggressive when he's in net. They've done it when you know Halak was in net. They've done it when Ranta was in net. Like even when Henrik was the goalie. Like when the backup was in, you you, you just have to play more structured. Not because the goalie's worse. It's just your starting goalie's playing more games. You you're you're more comfortable when he's in net because you've seen him play more times. You don't know what you're going to get every time Jonathan Quick's in net, unless like the way he's playing is now. But you just don't know when you you have a time where Igor's starting three, four times in a row, and then Quick comes in, he could be cold. You you just have to focus more defensively first, and then you can push the offense versus when the game starts from the second of the puck drop, you know if you have an odd man rush and the puck goes the other way, Igor's going to give you a great chance to, to make a save. So I think that, yes, they do play more structured under Quick, but it's just just nature of habit Mm -hmm. again i think in a lot of the games that quick has started and he's you know he's 8-0 and 1 i can think of like three games where he's allowed maybe four or five goals but the rangers put up six and seven and earn him that win when igor's a net you know and igor's letting up four or five the rangers aren't scoring goals do do you think do you think any of that has to do with uh, the way La, La Violette kind of changed the structure in having our defensemen and players block more shots and it's kind of blocking Igor's vision a little bit because I've seen a lot of things on that and it is a good point because the way, you know, Gallant 
ran his system is like Shesti could do his thing and see, get full vision of the ice and, you know, what's coming his way. And we didn't block as many shots. And now that's kind of switched up. And, you know, Shesti has been letting in a lot of goals, quite frankly. So I'm, yeah. I, you know, yeah. And I, I watched the highlights against Washington and, you know, those first three goals, the first one is, you know, Kreider totally loses his guy, the defenseman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I forget who made that six saucer pass and then the cross slot pass the Milano wide open net. But like, that's not Igor's responsibility. You know, that's the Rangers getting lost in the D zone. You know, second goal, it's right after a penalty. And um, I think Mantha's left wide open in front of the net for a deflection. Like no one's even around him. Can't blame Igor there. And the third one, Tom Wilson comes in on a clean two on one. And sure, maybe Igor can make that save. But an NHL player coming down on a two on one and has the whole shooting lane, like nine times out of 10, they should score that goal. You know, the fourth yeah. one is one Cody where, you know, I think it might have been Braden Schneider. I don't want to accuse him if it actually wasn't him, but there was a D zone turnover. And then, you know, I think the defenseman goes down to block the shot and it goes through the screen and Igor doesn't see that one. That's maybe the case you're talking about, right? Where you just kind of let Igor see it. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, you know, I think Igor has played well enough to keep them in games. They're just not scoring goals in the games that, you know, the, the, the goals go in, I guess. Whereas when quick is in net for the most part, they're scoring goals. And I don't know what, what the difference is there, but that just seems to be the case to me. And it goes back to the point. You'd rather have it now than later. So yeah, for sure. And we're going to have a lot of quick first Igor stuff. I know it. I mean, I've looked through yeah, a little bit, but I'll, I'll try to like, we just, we just sum it like, yeah, I'll try to okay. bounce. I'll, I'll pick two or three, you know? All right. Um, this next one is a totally different topic. Brand man, seven, six, nine, four, if the NHL had to bring a new expansion team, which city would it go to? I say Houston. We've had this discussion. Yo, didn't you shit? Wait, you say Houston or this guy said Houston? This guy I'm about Houston. to fucking destroy guy. you. This and guy. you know this what? Guy. Okay. Not you me. know what I was about to destroy you on, right? Uh, I don't you remember. remember. When, we had this, when we had this whole debate and you were like, Houston would be such a bad expansion team. The population is not even that big. And we had a huge debate. And I was like, you're crazy. Did I say that? Dude, we had this entire debate on episode. I don't think I said the population is not that big. Houston's a fucking huge city. Bro, we had this whole debate on an episode and listed our three expansion teams. And when I said Houston, you freaked out. Really? Yes. Eh, I won't put it past myself. <laughs> but who but, do you guys want now? Yeah, Houston's a good one. I, I like to see, I'd like to see another city get like a second team. I think when I said this last time, I think the city I said was Milwaukee. I'm pretty sure that's who I went with. Just because the Bucks had won an NBA championship. There's been yeah. college hockey games in Milwaukee that have sold out. The Blackhawks played a preseason game there. Plus, Wisconsin's also a pretty big hockey state as far as like college goes and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Cause because there's that's a, obviously you know, not like a cool everybody league. always when when people look for expansion teams, everybody always looks for like new cities or yeah. And I think Milwaukee would be great. But I'm also trying to think of a city that already has a team that could maybe use another. Like you look at down here, Florida, you but, got Tampa on one side, you got mm. the Panthers on the other, and then you got... You better not say uh, they could use another. No, yeah, no, no, no. Dude. I'm just saying okay. like there are cities <laughs> that have crazy. two yeah. and, and the rivalries are good and whatnot. Canada's got a lot. New York's obviously Yo, got theirs. You know, a lot here. <laughs> you know what would be kind of crazy that I just thought of on a whim and like it wasn't the team I was about to say, but or city I was about to say, but yo, Baltimore would be kind of cool. Well, they have the caps kind of, that's like 30 minutes. Yeah. I mean, Washington, yeah, no, Washington they're all cap, they are though. all caps fans down there, but I, I, yeah. I mean, it is a city. It's not a bad. Zone. Yeah. Baltimore no. and DC have every other, you know, they have every other sport. Yep. And Nats, Orioles, Ravens. Right yeah, Commanders. that's not a bad one. Baltimore had the uh, fun fact. Baltimore had the Skipjacks, the AHL team that Kenny Albert was a broadcaster for, and Barry Trotz was a coach for, and they were roommates on the road with that team. Oh, yo, shit, okay. what if um, what if Louisiana got a team? Like, well, so there? that's what I, so. New Orleans, New Orleans. Yeah. So that's what I said. Why would you say like Johnny and I had New Orleans? <laughs> when Johnny and I had this discussion, I said I said New Orleans, I said Houston, and I said I think the third one was Kansas City, maybe. Oh no, I Cody, I think you might have said Utah. I think you might have said Salt Lake City. Oh, maybe I said Salt Lake City. Maybe they I have a coast it. team, but not an NHL team. But they do pretty Cause, well. Because then you get because then you get like you get almost like a Nashville kind of vibe in New Orleans with yeah. like. 
a hockey do you put team. it though? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. They have, they have the they have the basketball arena there. You can just share it, maybe. I yeah. guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. That's yeah. what they do everywhere else. But that's a good question. I mean, yeah. the thing is though, like at the end of the day, do we Ah, really there it is. Hockey? I didn't say it too. <laughs> that's Avery's tick. What is his tick? At the end of the day, Avery always says that. Oh shit. Ah. What'd Sorry. you say? I didn't I got distracted. <laughs> What'd you even say? Um I said at the end of the day, do we even do we even need another hockey team? Uh, like I feel like Seattle. I feel like Seattle's expansion drive just happened. Yeah, it did. Like I know it's three years at this point, but it like we'll get another one eventually. But no, we, we don't need one right now. I don't think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And they always get benefited too. They always end up being good. So screw them. Yeah, yeah. Thirty two is a perfect number. Um. All right. Do we even want to do deadline stuff? Is that a question? Not yet. Ask? Yeah, we do that all the time. No. Okay. Uh, this next one from Mike underscore D 92. This is a good one. Is it time that VZ gets a few games with Mika and Kreider? Nope. Sticking with my stance. I think leave him where he is. I think the chemistry is flawless. Don't touch it. Yeah, I agree with Cody. I, I, you know, I just think we talk about structure and we talk about depth. He's so good down there and, and you saw how good they were against the first line of LA. Just, just keep it together. The the second and the fourth line should stay together. I think the guys in the first and third line are interchangeable, but second and fourth line have been so good. Just keep them. So a month ago, I think I disagreed and said, you know, give VZ a shot up there. But now I definitely kind of agree with you guys where, yeah. you know, last night we talked about it in the group chat today. And I asked LaViolette, like how, you know, LaViolette said, how awesome is it that Jimmy VZ, Johnny Brodzinski and Will Cooley score those three goals in a big game like that? And, you know, depth scoring is something that this team has lacked for years now, and to finally have it is is huge. So I, I agree with you guys. Um, and actually, I'll uh, I'll say Joe Manns actually wrote not a question, but how how good has VZ been? Twenty two percent of goals game winners, pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was more. I think did they say it was twenty eight percent? Uh, maybe he scored more. Easy. Maybe he yeah. scored more lately, and it's not a winner. He's um, awesome. I love Jimmy VC. Yeah. It's one of the best bargain deals in the NHL right now. Yeah. And, next year too. <laughs> and he talks about yeah, and he talked he's talked about it all the time. He's he, he was a he was a super touted player coming into the league and and he's finally fit into his role and he, he knows where he needs to be. And Cody said it perfectly. Just keep him where he is. There, there's no mm-hmm. reason to to try to get more out of a guy who's already given you more than enough. So yep, yep, yep. All right. And this next one, I told you guys I had a rant in here somewhere. This next one is from Christian underscore Iski. Is Capo ever going to be the second overall pick he's supposed to be? No. Hot take, <laughs> maybe, but no, he's not. He's the problem. The problem with that whole draft is the insurmountable difference from number one to number two in Jack Hughes to Kako. And I think every single rangers fan looks at that saying like well look what the devil's got at number one but like they were never close i mean they were like hughes they were at one point they certainly were at one point Uh, dude i think it was like man strength versus boy strength that that's what the the thing was i think on draft day it was like two echelons like different i I don't know i regardless like not close never gonna be close Will Kako break out eventually? Like, yeah, maybe. Maybe he'll be uh, turned into a 50-point player. Like, he's not going to be Jack Hughes. It's just never going to happen. I do think he'll still be a good hockey player somewhere, but um, unfortunately, it might not be with us. Who knows? I mean, like, they next year, his deal's expiring. He certainly didn't do anything to warrant, you know, a further deal this year, right, in his 20 games that he played. Um, so we'll see. Next year is essentially like a one-year prove-it deal for him, right? So... Avery, I think it's still a little too early to tell. By the way, Cody, very well said. Very well. Yeah, no, I agree, and I I still think it's a little too early to tell. I I still think he had a year or two left to prove it. Obviously, this injury is so bad for him. But you look at Quinton Byfield last night. I mean, what a player! What a player Mm -hmm. he looked like. I mean, that's a guy who I would love on the Rangers. Obviously, never happened, but. You talk about a guy who was – they were talking about him maybe being a bust, and now he looks like a, a clear first-liner and a guy who anybody would want. So 
I'm 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 not of the proponent that Kako is going to be great, but I'm also mm-hmm. still cautious in terms of the word bust or you know is he going to be good on the Rangers? There's still time. Okay, so you guys ready for my rant? Yeah, can't wait. All right, so here's my thought, and I think as sports fans, you know, a lot of you know, a big reason why everyone loves sports is the potential of a player. And I think that's the big thing around a draft, right? Is you take a risk on a guy and you love to see how they pan out and you love to see how they mold your franchise and build your franchise and eventually, hopefully, bring a championship to your franchise. And I actually heard Don LaGreca, who I love listening to, talk about Zach Wilson in this regard, where Jets fans had so much stock around Zach Wilson being their hero and whatnot. And then you'd look at him as a second overall pick and he doesn't pan out. But There's other guys, and I'm going to make this comparison now to hockey. Adam Fox is a third-round draft pick. If Adam Fox had a bad game, would you look at him and be like, ah, it's okay, he was a third-round pick, it's okay for him to have an off night, he wasn't supposed to be as good as he is? Would anyone ever say that? Well, not if he's already a star. Well, that's what I'm saying. But because because of where Capo Caco was drafted, he doesn't get that, that leeway. Every night he has to be up to par with what a second overall draft pick should be. And maybe he just isn't that. But if the Rangers, but if the Rangers are winning hockey games and Capo Caco is a role player, does anyone really fucking care? Like at the end of the day, like, you know, there are plenty of guys who get drafted from one to five that can be a part of a winning team and not have the biggest role. But as long as your team's winning games, it shouldn't really matter. I think sometimes a lot of people become so obsessed with where a player was picked that they hold on to that and hold on to that potential and the possibility of where this player can go, where sometimes they're just not meant to be in that position. And Kako, as high of a you know recruit, a scout as he was, and listen, I think at the time, there was no other player that the Rangers should have picked at that time. I think it made perfect sense. He was dominating totally. the world. He was a, a, a man amongst boys. And everything he had done to that point was a you know perfect candidate for a number two overall pick. The situation he was put in with this Rangers group has not allowed him to excel for whatever reason. And you know, like Cody said, doesn't mean he can't do it somewhere else. But for me personally, if the Rangers are winning hockey games and Cabo Caco's a third liner, I do not care if he is ever a second a second overall pick or not. So I'm Agreed. I'm gonna compare Capo to somebody here, and you know, I think if the Rangers go on a run and somehow he comes back, and you know, in the future he's on this team and he tends to perform pretty well in the playoffs. Like you know, we've had him for a couple runs now, and last year he was one of our best players in the playoffs. The year before he was one of our best players in the playoffs. So you know, I'm gonna compare him to a guy here who if he turns out to be like a Sam Bennett type of player who, you know, Sam Bennett was picked fourth overall. Um, I think a lot of people would say he never lived up to expectations, but he's an absolute killer in the playoffs. He's effective. Um, That's for sure. You know, I I think like I'd be totally okay with that. And I'd be more than happy with that if he's because, because at the end of the day, the playoffs are what matters. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Yeah, I'm do- I did it purposely. Um, no way. That was so not on purpose. Not, 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 not. Um, it's so hard, dude. The playoffs are what matters. <laughs> and, you know, I think if... if <laughs> Sorry, I think if it, No, no, you're good. And I think if he... If that's his game, that's his game, right? Yeah. So, like, I hope they can get him back and this year. And I hope we can have him for a playoff run so we can really see what he can do. And maybe the playoffs are his jam. And that's the most important jam to have, so... It'd be a whole different story if the Rangers weren't winning hockey games right now, but because they're first yeah. in the conference and first in the division, like to me, let them figure it out when he thinks. Well, you know that. what's funny? If the Rangers weren't winning hockey games right now, every single fan would be like, it doesn't even matter. We have we have Kako and we have Heedle out. So like it, it's not yeah. even fair. Like we don't have a full team. So yeah. you know. Yeah, it's true. It's a good point. Uh any final thoughts on that one before I go into the next one? He regardless, he just adds a strong two way presence to the team always, whether it's on the first line, third line. They definitely miss him in the lineup. I love having him in the lineup, regardless mm-hmm. of whether he was a second overall pick or a 200th overall pick. It's a guy who I still want on this team. I miss him. I miss Heedle. You you want all your guys. You, you want yeah. all your core guys on the team. And right now, it's unfortunate not having him. And has he lived up to that second overall pick? Nope. But we were saying the same. A lot of people were saying the same thing about Lafreniere in the offseason. And now everybody's gotten off his back. So maybe eventually people get off Kako's back. And he obviously has a year up on Lafreniere, but 
anything can change. It's it's such yeah. a long, you know, guys have such longer careers in the NHL and and guy and guys like Kaka who can who can defend themselves better because they're stronger. And it was just a freak injury and one of those things that you didn't want to see. And hopefully he comes back and like Cody says, performs to that playoff level. We'll see. We're all rooting for it. As you guys know, on the Blue Crew Pod, we are ride or die with our guys. Pro players. Pro players. Pro players. All right, this next one's definitely going to get Cody from 6 to midnight. Sammy Hockey 36. Happy Hanukkah, boys. When are we getting some Blue Crew merch? It's in the works. It's in the works. You've been saying that for like a month. (laughs) It's in the works. Listen, I'm not going to put a definitive deadline on this, but don't be surprised if you have some Blue Crew merch before the NHL trade deadline. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I thought the holidays. Hol- hol- are we not working on that? Well, it's, right, it might be tough to ship that's by then. That's it. Yeah, what are you saying? John, see, Johnny overpromises, under delivers. I underpromise, over deliver. Never forget. Johnny that. like celebrates Boxing Day. And Johnny, like, Johnny like, like, about that. He's like, he's like, did he say that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. I actually saw me thinking that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Christian Iski actually had another good one. Um, I think Kreider is so underrated. Do y'all agree? Kid from Toronto here. Love the content, fellas. We love you too. Yeah, thanks. I think league-wide, he's uh, I, we love him, and I think that yeah. league-wide, he's underappreciated, but he's obviously talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. But for us, I've, I've never taken a second of Chris Kreider for granted. He is so good in the offensive zone, whether he has the puck or doesn't. He's so strong. He's fast. He's done everything the Rangers could have possibly asked for, and he, he might have had a couple tough series in the playoffs where he wasn't able to score or get any points. But throughout the longevity of his career, he's been fantastic. What are you guys smiling about? I have a really good debate here, I think. And okay. it, it might not be. Wait, why are you laughing, though? Because you had a like fly go on your head mid, did mid, I? Uh, mid, <laughs> mid-ran, bro. Wait, what do you do? Oh, no, I, I was holding up a finger like head. I wanted to chime in, and Cody was like, I don't know Johnny went like this, Avery. Yeah. Johnny went like this to like chime in, and I went, God, you guys are trying to suck. beat it down. Okay, go ahead. Um, no, but, okay, so Avery, I think you'll be fired up about this. Um, so I asked Steve Levy when he came on here, like, who's the more decorated Ranger? And, and I worded that poorly, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Messier or Henrik Lundqvist. What I really kind of meant to get at was, Who's, who do you think of first when you hear New York Rangers, right? Like, who's that one guy? Like, if you're asking 100 people in the street of, of New York City and you say, who's the first Ranger that comes to your mind? Like, who do you think people would say Messier or Lundqvist? That's kind of what I was getting at. If Chris Kreider wins a Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers, knowing that he is on the verge of, like, setting a ton of records and surpassing a lot of historic Rangers, is he in that conversation of, like, you know, Kreider's one of the first people I think of when I hear New York Rangers? I'm saying if he wins a cup. So, so, yes, so that but, goes back to my point of that internally, yes. Externally, no. People remember Henrik as the king of New York. People remember Mark Messi as the guy who saved the Rangers from their drought. But Chris Kreider to us is a New York Rangers legend. And if he wins a Stanley Cup, he'll forever be – there will forever be number 20 in the rafters. But externally, NHL-wise – He'll never get the appreciation that Henrik got or Mark Messier. Un- unless he absolutely dominates during the playoffs and like has multiple I mean, game winners. And but but wait, what I was gonna say was yeah. I kind of disagree with you a little bit, Avery, because I think Crowder's a little underappreciated internally as well from Ranger fans. I agree. The Ranger dude, we okay, have yeah, so I agree. Many- we have so many stars. <laughs> maybe, that, like, maybe I maybe I was just talking more about myself and like us. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Now that I because, now that now that you say that, I start to think about like people on Twitter and like talking. To yeah, the because no one really talks about Kreider, Christopher. No, James. dude, because we have Fox, we have Panarin, we have yeah. you know, we have like all these guys, Igor. and like he just really gets yeah, Igor. He just gets buried under a little bit, and like this this is a guy who had fifty goals a year and a half ago, and you know he's on pace to have I think forty this year. I don't know how you many two, he had last. You two think- motherfuckers buried me when I said that he was going to have a great season. Yes, uh, dude, that, was, did. that was that was pro check, bro. That was no, Trocek. it was Kreider too. I said I said that he was going to have over forty goals. You're like, what? No way! Hold on, I'm I don't remember. It yeah, I, remember. I, I don't I don't recall. That's impossible. Are dude, you in our predictions? Yeah, did we yeah, tweet yeah. the predictions for that for him? There- it's yeah, on Instagram. 100%. Instagram. It's gonna be it's gonna be so funny when it's like a three point difference. Yeah, I'm, curious. Yeah, I'm curious what it is. Too. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going. You guys keep talking. 
Um, why well, Cody was like in the middle of a rant here. Chris Kreider, Avery had seventy five. Okay, so he was higher on him than us. You Way had sixty two. I, I had sixty one. Okay, what does but he have now? The, Points wise, uh, I don't know. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I don't. Are you that one was on purpose, purpose though. I, I did that. That on one was on purpose. Why do you think I stopped? Yeah. That was on purpose. Yeah. Um, no, but what I was saying was, do you think? I don't think we were against 40 goals though, because if Johnny predicted 62 and I predicted 61, how many assists do you think we were yeah. thinking Chris Kreider was going to get, dude? Well, well, Cody, to that point right now, Kreider in 26 games, 14 goals, eight assists, 22 points. Yeah. Yeah. He's not getting more than, than 20 assists. I, and 11, I, 11 of those. Oh no, wait. Uh, yeah. I really uh, want to pull that I just want a sound 11, bite from that. Seven of his goals are on the power play. Okay. Okay. I'd love to hear the sound bites from that because I'm pretty sure I said like Kreider is going to have 75 points. You guys are like, what? No, no, that might have that been no true. Way. That might have been true. That might have well, been true, also, but we never slighted the 40 like goals. The hockey yeah. news would never say anything like that. No, no. <laughs> 75, definitely, I could see myself shitting on. But also, yeah. we were kind of in the narrative of put Lafreniere on the first line and put Kreider on the third. So that's why I think we were lower as well. Also, like, Kreitz had 54 points last year, 36 goals. I, I mean, I don't, and the year before 52, like, I don't think we would have shit on 40 goals. I think yeah. for sure 75 points, that I agree with, because his his all-time high was obviously 77 in, in 22. But I, I vaguely remember myself shitting on you for Trocek, and so far he's yeah. proved me he's wrong. He's been so wrong. Yeah. Yeah, go Vinny, wrong. baby. Since, since November 1st, Vincent Trocek is 18th in the NHL in points. 21 and 17 games. Also, I mean, Johnny, to to be fair, a Avery did like say every single player was going to have yeah, like 90 points. Avery, he was Avery like, this guy has 90, this guy has 90, Kako 90, Lafrani. Avery oh, glazed yeah. everyone. Avery Pro glazed everyone. Um, yeah. Also, just I want to shout out this Christian Iski again because that's two questions that we've talked about now for probably like 10 plus minutes. Um, we have a couple more. Are you guys cool with a couple more? Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is a nice one. Uh, Chris is neck deep. Congrats to Avery and his family for 50 years. Thank you. Congrats, that bro. Means a lot. That is nice. Chris is neck deep. Yeah, I love that name. That's a crazy Twitter name, but yeah, no, I really appreciate that. It was a cool moment. I, we talked about it a little bit a couple episodes ago, but that that's, that's something that I'll never forget. All right. Now let's talk about this one more time. This is Scott Ritchie one. Is this going to be Quick's team if he keeps playing this well? No. And I think, Avery, you actually made the point, or I, I don't even know if this was you. I don't want to give you the credit if it wasn't you. But this team will not win a Stanley Cup if Igor is not the number one guy. Like, I, I am very, yeah, very adamant about that. As well as Quick is playing, and he deserves all the credit in the world because he's been unbelievable. Darcy Kemper won a cup. Bro, hold on. If you tell me this team is gonna be, if you tell me this team is gonna be a type of situation that the Boston Bruins have with Swayman and Olmark, no, 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 I'll no, no, gladly no. take that. I'll, yes. I'll happily take that. If if we're switching every other game and both of them are winning games, oh yeah, I'll take that. No question. If you if you're telling me we got two goalies that can give us a chance to win a game every single night, absolutely. I, I don't care. I don't care if you flip flop the games, but. Igor Shosturkin is going to be starting more games than Jonathan Quick. I promise you that. No doubt about it. Yeah. Also, been that dreadful. Like he still has a two point eight three goals bad. against. He still, but he still he's has a two point eight three goals against and a point nine zero eight save percentage. Jonathan Quick has it's, a point nine two two and a two point two zero. His his last like seven games, he's the he's discrepancy. Been no, out he that was far off. Off. It's it's going to change. He it's was... going to change, and everybody's going to be come back to this episode and be Our like, defense has been was shit, right. Though. Avery was right. Igor was Yo, playing really well right. until the Ottawa game. The last two games haven't been his best, but before that, he was fine. Yeah, I also really don't want to harp on this anymore. Yeah, Sam, we've done it a lot. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, just hey, it's Sweeze. Hey, it's Sweeze626, and I tweeted this today. Hey, buddy. Rangers fans need to make a chant for Jonathan Quick asking for a friend. Like, we need, like, Agreed. a quickie. 
Bust a quickie. Johnny Johnny Lazarus has Bust the pulse. a quickie. Johnny Lazarus has the pulse of New York Rangers hockey in his fist. And when he tweets, they listen. So the next game well, that dude. Jonathan Quick starts, they will be chanting quickie. I promise you that. Christopher Games to. plays. He hockey made that game. sick glove save oh. last night, and there was just like nothing. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> or the Christopher that Games thing. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, he's just uh, making fun geez. of me. I love you. All right, and then uh. What is this? Yo, oh, this is kind of this kind of nice. Would be f- no, it's be wild. All right, we got two more. Is that cool? <laughs> I mean, as long as as long as they're game. quickie, bro. <laughs> no, I, I, Johnny I, I refuses to, to work, laugh. What, Johnny refuses to laugh at bust a quickie, so he doesn't, you know, r- remove his. It's defense. just like, dude, he you're can't. a father He's of one at thirty. Every time I say something funnier than you, you just respond with, "You're a father, bro." Like I get it. I just don't think that's funny. Bust a quickie, funny. like, what are you, 10? <laughs> I'm 10? You want to talk about that, Mr. Fucking Tomato Sauce on Spaghetti, you fucking weirdo? Oh, God. Okay, enough. Kid, kid show. 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 No, because the other lines have been so good. Like it, it will happen if Laviolette decides to split up that second line. But until now, no. As, I don't hate. I don't hate the Trocheck Kreider Brodzinski line though. As an avid Rangers fan, either, but... I think we can all appreciate the fact that lines are not getting changed up every single day. I yeah. think we. I think we ride it out. Yeah, I think we ride sure. it out. Yeah, I. I, I mean, you know, that's it. And then uh, this is the last one, even though all three of us are Jewish, which I still don't believe Avery is. Uh, Goth Brooks, RVA. Aside from a VZ jersey, what do you guys want for Christmas, hockey or not? Yo, Avery, where's your menorah, bro? Prove Johnny wrong right now. I don't have it's a menorah. The, it's in the right mail? Now. You're good, dude. You're good, dude. Don't I was worry. actually, going, going, I was actually you know, today, I was going to order a menorah and a Christmas tree. So. But you're fully Jewish. What do you want to do? Hanukkah's almost over. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to explain to you my entire situation because I'm sure everybody (laughs) wants to hear this. When my parents got married, my mother converted to Judaism, but my entire mom's side of her family is Catholic, and we would always celebrate Mm. Christmas with them as well. So I do both. So they converted too? No. (laughs) Only Johnny would respond to a joke like fully serious. I don't know why. why. Sorry, can you repeat the question one more time? It's just it what do we get? Aside from the easy jersey, what do you want for Christmas? Yeah. Mm. So Avery, what's your answer? Um, you know, it's funny. I wanted a new blender, but I just bought one, so now I, I don't know what I want. I, okay. As I'm getting older, I start to want less. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd honestly just like I'd, I'd, I'd want some money to like just do some more stuff on the weekends, I guess, like or like pay my rent. You just you just want money. <laughs> Yeah, just, it, 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 just just any kind of relief. Get a job, pal. No, yeah. I, I, you know, I have a job. I'm just saying, to, like any, any kind of just some, show, so. just some relief money, some you know, funny money, whatever. Mm, I don't need any material. I'm not, I'm not a material guy. Yo, you guys suck, man. I really want to end this episode. <laughs> no, All right, Cody, what do you want? I, I, I just said, I, I just get me tickets to a Bill Burr show. Let's call it. A oh, dude. I saw him live at Forest Hills. He's, he's he my favorite. Uh, me and Jack, me and Jackie are going to uh, Mark Norman. Do you know who he is? So yes. fucking funny. Oh, he, I think the TikTok. I've seen that guy on TikTok. Yeah. He has a he's Netflix special. Guy? Yeah. D- like, yeah. Oh, so, he's great. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to, we're going, uh, for my birthday in a month. So that's Bill Burr was at the Prudential Center. I really wanted to go. It was like right before I was leaving to come down here too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just recently. And, yo, speaking of that, have any of you guys watched Sebastian's new show, Bookie? It's hilarious. Oh, wait, wait, what is it on? Oh, what's it on? What's yo, it on? What's it on? HBO, dude. It is. Yeah, I'm going to so get, I got to get HBO. Dude, you have to watch it. It's it's called Bookie, and he's just a, dude, it's, he's he's a sports I will check that out. It is, right. the, it's fucking hilarious. I'm gonna I love that. Sebastian. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah, good call, Cody. I'll definitely watch that, actually. Um, I've been looking for a new show too. I just watch fucking like YouTube every night. Um, all right, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. We got uh, an interview with Tim Peel tomorrow, which will probably drop on Thursday. Um, I'll wear all my Toronto. Yeah, you should. You really should. 
Yeah, I will. I think he'd laugh if you if you, he joined you us. Won't. You, won't. you won't. He definitely won't. Yeah. Um, Rangers play Toronto tonight as you're listening. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Going to the game. Catch me outside. You're gone? Yeah, I'm gone. Come say what's up. I'm sitting on the glass. So, suck it. Are you actually? I'll come, I'll come say what up. Yeah, I am. That's sick. That's sick. All right. Cody, end it. <laughs> oh, LFGR. <laughs>